this shit isn't going to wait. And I want to come in raw and I want to come in quick on this. Anthony Bourdain is dead. If you don't know who Anthony Bourdain was, he was like a rock and roll chef. Travelled around, did a lot of stuff. Now, I don't give that much of a fuck about food per se, but I loved watching him because he was really articulate and fierce. He's been called the Elvis of cooking, but to me, he was always the, the Henry Rollins of cooking. He always had this kind of intensity about him. And when he went abroad to do these these travel shows, these cooking shows, these these food shows, he wasn't a snob about it. He would eat anything, you know, he'd eat street sausage, he'd try locusts, pig's ass, whatever else. You know, he, he wanted to get in there and he wanted to understand and he wanted to experience the, re- the reality of things. And now he's dead, at 61, having apparently killed himself by hanging. I don't know that he was public about suffering from depression. A a quick look around, I didn't see anything. I hadn't heard anything from watching him. But looking back now, with hindsight, you can kind of see that that maybe he did hints and stuff about, about it. But he's dead. Of suicide. This um, successful, articulate, strong-willed, fierce man who fought constantly for what he thought was right and was forthright about his opinions and, you know, got into feuds and stuff. But still, he's... I don't really do heroes, but he's someone I would admire in the same way that I admire Rollins. That that fierceness, that... that, uh, that articulate anger that I think a lot of people who suffer from depression and, and so on, I think quite a lot of us find a, a haven in being angry <laughs> and fierce and righteous. You know, I think we I think we find cover in that. I think we find protection in that. I think we find a, a healthy outlet for our turmoil in in doing that because depression forces on us an intensity of self reflection. And the first person that we have to live with before anyone else is ourselves. So I think that's how that comes out. Now, a lot of people, obviously, a lot of well-meaning, lovely people are going to be spamming your, your social media, your blog feeds, everywhere you look. There is going to be someone talking about this and saying, if you feel bad, oh, you should, you should call the suicide prevention hotline or, or whatever. Okay. Real talk. <laughs> I have suffered from severe depression and anxiety for over a decade at this point, and I have stared that motherfucker death in the face more than three times. You know, I, I, I'm not actually sure that's how that's how bad it has been at some points. You know, I, I have been a couple of inches away from death before, so I, I've been there on that edge I've stared it in the face and I've come back from it and I know how hard it is when you see someone like Bourdain who you see such a such a powerful and effective voice someone who seems tough you know like tough and sinewy and gristly like they could take anything and when they succumb you can't help but think to yourself yeah, this person with all, all this success, who overcame all this hardship and drug addiction and it, and everything else, they couldn't cope. I'm just me. How, how am I supposed to cope? <laughs> you know, and and that's that's hard. That is really fucking hard to to deal with. It's it's stupid that someone you've never met can have that kind of effect on you. But I I know that it does when you hear about this or or Chris Cornell's passing hit hit me pretty bad. Now, don't get me wrong, these suicide hotlines and things, they are good as kind of last-ditch things. And I know anyone who's had depression for any period of time will have kind of put together a toolbox of things that work for them, you know, that, that help pull you back from that brink, whether it's throwing yourself into games or making yourself so insensible (laughs) through drugs or drink or whatever else that you couldn't kill yourself if you tried because you just can't gather that much effort 
to uh, cutting yourself to focus the pain that's something that I've, that I've done it's like it it's like it makes all that mental turmoil real and physical and something you can see and and that's somehow more easier to grasp it, it's yeah it's hard to understand but that's kind of how it works or uh, as a substitute for that crushing ice in your hand until it hurts you know you've got you've got all these things but then you can still get to that edge and I know all these people are well-meaning and you know it can be one of these coping techniques to call one of these lines but by and large they can't do anything to help you they're not allowed in a lot of cases to do anything to help you you know they can't identify you because anonymity is important they can't call the police or the ambulance and send them to you all they can do is talk so if you are on that edge and if you can don't call one of these lines unless you've got no other option call someone you know call someone who can intervene call someone who can come to you and make sure you're okay call someone who will call the police or the ambulance or your parents or your siblings or your friends or your housemates and flatmates whatever contact someone who can do something that is far more likely to to help and if you do go ahead and and kill yourself you're a cunt and i know you feel like nobody loves you nobody cares that you're a burden on everyone cuz i've been there i know that feeling of absolute worthlessness and depression is a son of a bitch because it thinks it knows you and it knows the real you and it knows you better than anyone else it knows you're an imposter it knows your every accomplishment is bullshit you know and it wheedles away at you and yeah it's hard virtually impossible to deny unless someone is there pulling you out of it and telling you that they don't want you to die but you listen to me don't fucking do it you will hurt people far more than you do by existing by killing yourself i have been unfortunate enough to be around to see the aftermath when someone has done this so i've seen both sides of the coin and that has helped me pull back you know when you see someone's wife sobbing someone's uh, children going off the rails when you hear stories from the men who have to clean up tracks after someone has thrown themselves onto them to kill themselves you know, even if you've got nobody some poor motherfucker has to come along and clean up the mess after you've died and there is really no clean way to die at all especially if you're not found for a few days you know you hang yourself you you're gonna shit your pants and piss all over the floor and as you rot your guts are gonna drop out of you onto the ground and some poor sod is gonna have to scrub that clean you throw yourself onto the tracks they have to clean that shit up with a toothbrush pretty much and they're they're off work due to the trauma for three months and they may never even go back you know you slit your wrist someone's gonna have to find you in that bathroom or wherever and and mop that shit up so think of other people don't be weak grit your teeth and say i can be stronger than anthony bourdain I can be stronger than Chris Cornell. I, I can do it. And they did for a long time before it got them. And I am going to hold on to life by my teeth and my nails until this passes. One more day. But if you feel that shit, contact someone who can actually help.